Alrighty, right. Thought I would continue worse than dragons. Oops. And we are kind of in, well, just about smack dab. Well, kind of the north middle. There are only two pathways. Well, there might be a third one off to the, little, uh, to the west a bit, but two that I use, two that I know of really well. Um, kind of down to the south, Trevanian forelands kind of area. But we are in the middle of the three, if the, if the westernmost one is indeed one. We are attacked by a couple more of those peg-legged things. Oops. Yato, yato. What's in here? It's kind of what they remind me of a little bit. But with those like big metal, wide brimmed hat visor things, helmet, whatever. So yeah, we've been attacked by a bunch of those along the way here. We're we're running past some drakes, just kind of dragging their their forelimbs slash wings kind of along the ground as they walk. Not dragging, but you're walking on you. Yeah. Got a destination here amongst them. We sail, Alphano, Estinian. Should we should we chance to meet Master Champ again? Remind me to thank him. Had he not warned us to expect the Gnath, I doubt I, I would be standing here. I made ruins that I would tent tentatively describe as Ishgardian. The style, if not quite identical, betrays a definite resemblance. You have a scholar's eye, Master Alphano. This structure is, in fact, over a thousand years old. It is a remnant of the age when our ancestors and dragonkind lived together in peace. It's a knocked over 50-ish foot tall dragon statue. Hmm. You claim this is evidence of our harmonious go past, of our harmonious past. I was taught that these buildings were constructed by heretics in honor of your Dravanian masters. This rubble inspires no such awe in me. Stubborn fool, how desperately you cling to the false teachings of your beloved Holy See. Enough. Both of you, we threaten the success of our mission with this inc incessant squabbling. Mercy, pray reason with these two. I've always chose our goals are the same, but now... I want to click the truth of the past will be revealed. Quite, lest you forget. Our goal is to prevent a war which will claim the lives of Dravanians and Ishgardians alike. If we are to accomplish this, you must learn to tolerate each other's presence. Trust in Mercy's gift. In time, the sequence of history will be brought to light. Let that be enough, Estinian. You would have me keep my counsel until Mercy's visions confirm the truth? Very well. But bait me not. Our meeting with Harris Valger will likely provide the catalyst Mercy's gift requires, as it did mine. Let us press on. And we'll once again just take the gill. Speaking with Isail for the next quest, the Trine Towers. Spy you the three great towers to the west. Ishgardians know them as Onyx Trine. The place serves as a roost for Harisvalgar's lesser kindred. If we are to reach the peak of Psalm All, then we must first beseech these dragons to open the way. But do not be disheartened. The one who leads them is a friend. Which way is west? This way? I can, I can see some tower. Okay. Of rather more concern is the disposi disposition of the Nath. Let us survey the approach to the towers and see if the path is clear. They all went that way, but I really can't go that way. So I'm going this way. Heading south southwest past the drakes Giovanni and avis earth sprites or filamentals some big old kind of tree ant kind of things more thick than they are tall i suppose
It's a little less green and forested in the southern kind of area. Actually, a lot less green and forested, I suppose. The, um, the grass kind of gets more toward the orange or brown colors. There are a fair number of green patches. Lots of rocks. Some, uh, the river or stream is still flowing down here. And there's some spiky bears and those weird, like, bubble-topped alligator things. Oh, he's part of a fate. Oh, go this way. And we have to turn directly west along this path. A stone cobbled path. Almost like stone tiled, actually. Kind of more cobbled, tiled than cobbled. And then we meet Isail, Estinian, and Alphano outside like a main, like outer gate, I suppose, to the towers. Tis as I feared. The road ahead is teeming with Nath soldiers. Marsachant did not exaggerate then. These beastmen have grown brazen indeed if they would threaten the dragon so openly. Do they not intend to sorry, do they intend to assault the lair by itself? Or itself, damn it. I pray they do not. Mighty though my Dravanian friends are, they are yet vulnerable to the Nath's muskets. There is no route save the one before us. Should the beastmen offer battle, we have no choice but to accept. Hear hear. I will poke them with my pokey stick. We have battle number uno. If I recall correctly, these battles last a while. Like, um, they kind of get reinforcements partway through. So even though I have a tendency to want to mount up as soon as combat, it looks like it's over. It won't work. Yep, I was right. Two more come from a little bit off. But they are not dangerous. They don't last long at all. That would be it. So the two waves. The first wave pops immediately. Second wave pops either when both are dead in, in the first wave or shortly enough after where you might have to fight all of them at once if you're slow enough in killing them. Which who the heck would be because they die so quickly. Heck, even a, even a white mage. Do a fair amount of damage though. Once again, wave number two, but they're closer this time. Two hits kills that one. One hit almost oh yeah, one hit plus a little white white thrust, which is just like your normal damage from just regular melee swings as opposed to abilities or weapon skills. So my combo combo closer. Plus just one little white hit. And we have cleared the road. Speaking with Isail. I take no pleasure in killing the Nath. T'was to avoid bloodshed that I agreed to, do, to join you on this journey. Well, it cannot be helped. We may, pre we may proceed into the courtyard together, but leave the t task of hailing its occupants to me. Blah. And keep your lance on your back, Dragoon. On my word to the warrior of light, I shall start no fight, only finish it. You truly are beyond salvation. Come then. Swear to me. We kind of, the three of us stop while he sail continues walking forward just a little bit. Vidofnir! Vidofnir. She shouts up to the sky, and a white and silver dragon comes down. Not gigantic, but still a dragon. Ah, tis thee, little one. From above, I did mistake thee for a nath. Tis well I chanced to look again, for thou wouldst now be ash. Dear Vidofnir, how I have missed you. Would that I had come sooner, and not out of dire necessity. Thou art troubled. Speak that I might know thy plight. Thou wouldst have father admonish his brood brother. I would end this war without further bloodshed. 
How am I to believe thee, little one? When thine own companion beareth Nidhogg's stolen eye! Have care, dragon, or I shall gouge out one of yours. You forget yourself, sir. We are here on a mission of peace. My sires will forbiddeth me from inviting discord to our home. Tis for this reason and no other that thou still drawest breath, knight. Vidofnir, please. We must be allowed to convey our intentions to Resvalgar in person, with words of our own choosing. Grant us this favor and open the way to Som Al. Thou hast ever been welcome, little one. But I cannot grant thy wish. I am bound to remain here and protect my kin from the Nath's god. The Nath have summoned a primal. Pray excuse my forwardness, but if we were to eliminate the threat to your territory, would you consent to Lady Izzel's request? Ha! <laughs> Dost thou imagine thyself equal to the task? To succeed where dragons have failed? Tis beyond thee, mortal. But thou art welcome to try, nonetheless. Only know that idle promises shall avail thee naught. And she, I think, roars. It would seem we have no choice but to make good on Alphino's offer. Flies off. <sighs> Why must our every bid for peace breed yet more war? Estinian, Estinian was watching her go, silent. For once. <laughs> uh, still got plenty of time here. Let's do, oops. Grab the gill. Move on to the next one. Speak with the sail here. Uh, well, hold on. I'm gonna go grab this Chikobo thing really quick. So the Chikobo, um, kind of. The stone appears to be a large horn. Perhaps if you were to blow into one of the holes, it would summon a Chikobo. Though it may be prudent to leave a rental fee just in case. So you you can get your Chocobos from this summoning stone that looks like kind of a Chocobo chick without wings. Just kind of rocked back a little bit. Like you would like a, a carved kind of Chocobo kind of toy without legs or wings. Yeah, anyway. Hey, check. Gifts for the outcasts. Level 52 from a sale. So the Nath have summoned their god, and thus is the mystery of the newfound belligerents laid to rest. Are you not glad, Lady Iceheart? I thought you would applaud them for summoning a primal to further their own ends. After all, you did. I did not reach out to Saint Shiva to further mine own ends. I desired her strength only to forge anew the peace between man and dragon. But what a fool I am to speak of peace to you, a bloodthirsty savage who murders without thought or compunction. Enough, enough, I say. If the Nath have truly brought forth the deity from the Aether, we must face it together or watch our hopes fall apart. Now, uh, sorry, all now rests upon this primal's defeat. But ere we think of confronting it, we must first study its origins. What is the nature of this god? What manner of faith sustains its existence? My apologies. You are right, of course. Let us return to Tailfeather and consult with Marsashan. He knows more of the Nath and their culture than most. I will not forget, forget the Aethernet shard here, which will prevent a long and annoying. Well, I mean, I get Jacobo back, but um, I could just not. Uh, I guess I've already been here. Oh yeah, duh, <laughs> duh. Okay, so let's just do the quick hundred gill teleport. Oh, back to tail feather. Hot dog. 
Ja, I'll take a day off by the. I finally finished um, his dark materials, and just as heart wrenching at times and lovable at times as the books. And then I figured out there actually are. There's supposed to be a trilogy where the first book is set before the gold, uh, the Golden Compass. And the next two books are supposed to be set after uh, the Amber Spyglass. So after his Dark Materials. Um, so now they're on my book list. Back with Marcia Champ. Oh, back already, are we? Hmm. Uh, met the Nath, did you? And what is it you'd like to? Summon the primal, you say? Seven hells. Well, I don't know bugger all about Nath religion, but if I'm honest, beyond their trading habits, they, uh, they're never seen much point in asking. But it should be that hard to find out. From time to time, we barter with a small hive to the north and west of here. Outcasts from the main tribe, from what I understand. I reckon they'd be willing to tell you a bit about themselves if you give them the right incentives. That sounds promising. And what exactly would a Nath consider to be the right incentives? Oh, nothing your average hunter couldn't scrounge up in a day or two. But seeing as you're in a hurry, you might want to divide the chores amongst yourselves. You want a good-sized jar of land trap nectar, a basket of kailumun, kailum, it's a kailum tree fruit. I figured out how to pronounce that earlier quickly, but I forgot this time. And, always a Nath favorite, a generous portion of young nanka flesh. I shall gather the fruit. Leaping to the lower branches of these forest uh, giants should present little challenge to me. And I shall collect the nectar with Master Alphino's arcane assistance. And that leaves you to bring home the meat. You need to carve it from the smaller Nankas that live in the rivers. Three big hunks should be enough, I reckon. Once you've got everything together, you need to set it down and set it down at what we call the trading post. Here, I'll mark the spot on your map for you. You've been, <clears throat> you've been most kind, Master Masterchamp. Well then, let us attend to our respective tasks and reconvene at the trading post. I need hardly add that the last one there is a rotten Nanka egg. Right in my chocopo back through the water to the north through the port colors black chocopo time up on the chocobo bus I should at some point in time finish like just the storyline of Final Fantasy X there's just I do kind of want to figure out how to fight all of the like higher more powerful scary monsters in the monster arena but at the same time the strategies require like a lot um, you got to get special gear to help protect you against special debuffs that you definitely do not want to get on you some of them are a for sure death. Wait, um, the Nanka are those like bubble, bubble skins. Like the t if you picture an alligator and the entire top of the alligator is just like large blue bubbles. And I mean, the size of bowling ball bubbles. But the little ones just kind of look like baby alligators. Well, actually, not really. They look like. Little baby insect things. Bigger, obviously, than insects, but like their faces are weird. They're like squid faces, kind of almost. Alright. With those fleshes, with that flesh in hand, we ride north, northwest. Past some of those chubby treants, some earth sprites. In between large hills. And apparently we are the last. I 
I was able to gather a goodly amount of nectar from the land traps, though I would not have known how to harvest it without Isail's help. Do you have your, the nonka meat? Three nonka flesh handed over. Splendid. I shall put this with a Sinian's fruit and assemble a suitably generous looking camper for the gnath. Gifts for the outcasts complete. Take the gill again. 20 minutes and 40 seconds. The non mid, sorry, non mind is the name of this quest. N O N M I N D, one word, non mind. Like hive mind, but opposite, I would, say, I would guess. Well, everything appears to be in order. Assuming no one has any objections to my choice of presentation, I shall place our offerings at the trading post as instructed. Were I of the Nath, I would I think I would be suitably impressed. You had to make a cutscene for that? Oh. Well, how long must we wait? Should we have sounded a signal of some such? Yeah. Calm yourself, Master Elfino. Our offering has not gone unnoticed. Indeed, three green-robed Nath are walking up on their, like, stilt-leg things. It really is strange. Click, click. Long has it been since hunters came last, last came to trade, bearing gifts that filled the air with such delightful scents. Land trap nectar, kelim tree fruit, and nanka flesh, they all say in together. What delectable foods you have brought for us. Our meager existence is much enriched by your bounty. Click, click. Come, hunters. Come to our hive if you would trade. Cramped and stifling our homes are, but the rancid incense keeps the dragons at bay. Cramped. Stifling. And horribly smelly. But better to live in stench than be cracked and crunched by dragon jaws, yes? Come, come. It is not far. And they... Do their weird stilt walk off. And I follow. I will follow you to your stinky home. We're speaking with Vath Fleetfoot. Vath. Click, click, your presence has been announced to the storyteller. You must speak to our chosen leader in words, for we are Vath. We are the non-mind. In words, I guess, as opposed to in your mind, I guess. So Vath Storyteller is our checkmark end of quest. Click, click, welcome to our hive, hunters. You have brought delicacies much sought after by our people. And we are much pleased. What would you have in return? Honored Elder, pray allow me to begin by thanking you for welcoming us into your home and for accepting our humble offerings. My companions and I are come in search of knowledge, specifically knowledge of your people's god. Knowledge alone? What strange hunters you are. But if it is words you desire, then words shall you shall have. We are the Vath, the non-mind, and to speak is our fate. You will hear the tale of the Nath's god, of the god that one mind summoned into our midst. The one mind? These are the Nath who reside in the main colony? Yes, they are one, connected, but let us begin the story at its beginning. Some moons ago, a single dragon flew in from the east, bleeding and weak. It flew from the sky and into the hive where it was swarmed by my brethren, and with spear and spell and musket, the dragon was slain. "'Twas likely one that had fled battle with my kinsmen. I should commend you to, for finishing the job." Isail and, uh, and Estinian look at each other. Estinian shrugs. "'Dragons are fierce and terrible adverse adversaries. The one mind would always cower when their winged shadows passed over the ground, but no longer. They had learned that a battle-weary Javanian was easy prey. Thus did the one mind decide to, uh, decide to heed the words of the black-robed men. The one mind would call forth our god and unleash his blades upon the dragons. Dravanian lands would become Nath lands, and ever larger would grow our domain. But our god ever hungers. The price he demands in crystals far exceeds the rewards for this war. We of the Vath despise and revile his insatiable existence. Um, crap, I have to pick a ring. Um, what was I gonna... If I choose to do another job from zero to 60, I think it was going to be Archer. 
slash bard. Even though I don't like it. But I've already got black mage that I really don't have a bard that I play. I have an, I have an arc, arcanist slash summer that I play. So, yeah, I guess it'd be dexterity, vitality. Alright, um, we're gonna get, I'm gonna call it for the night, I think my, I think my housemate can hear me and he's sighing very loudly in the other room, so, but he was listening to a movie, so I can't imagine that, anyway, um, that's it for tonight, I shall see you next time, jolly, jolly good, tally ho.